Good evening and welcome to this service of evening prayer on the fourth Sunday after Easter. If you'd like to follow the readings and the prayers, they're all on the Church of England's daily prayer app. And if you want to just allow the prayer to wash over you this evening and be held by it, that's fine too. We keep a moment of stillness before we begin. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed, and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory, and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and for ever. Amen. Verses 1 to 10 of Psalm 29, with a prayerful pause at the Red Diamond. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king for evermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Ezra, chapter 3. When the seventh month came, and the Israelites were in the towns, the people gathered together in Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, son of Josadak, with his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Sheatiel, with his kin, set out to build the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as prescribed by the law of Moses, the man of God. They set up the altar on its foundation, because they were in dread of the neighbouring peoples, and they offered burnt offerings upon it to the Lord morning and evening. And they kept the festival of booths as prescribed, 
and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the ordinance as required for each day and after that the regular burnt offerings, the offerings at the new moon and all the sacred festivals of the Lord and the offerings of everyone who made a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord but the foundations of the temple of the Lord were not yet laid. So they gave money to the masons and to the carpenters and food and drink and oil to the Sidonians and the Tyrians to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea, to Joppa, according to the grant that they had from King Cyrus of Persia. In the second year after their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, in the second month, Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and Jeshua son of Josadak made a beginning together with the rest of their people, the priests and the Levites and all who came to Jerusalem from the captivity. They appointed the Levites, from twenty years old and upwards, to have oversight of the work on the house of the Lord. And Jeshua, with his sons and his kin, and Cadmiel and his sons, Binui and Hodiva, along with the sons of Henadad, the Levites, their sons and kin, took charge of the workers in the house of God. When the builders laid the foundations of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals according to the directions of King David of Israel, and they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures for ever towards Israel. And all the people responded with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundations of the house of the Lord were laid. But many of the priests and Levites and the heads of families, old people who had seen the first house on its foundations, wept with a loud voice when they saw this house. Though many shouted for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping. For the people shouted so loudly that the sound was heard from far away. Here ends the reading. The canticle is words from Peter's first letter. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. The second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2. So, then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. 
But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father, so then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here ends the reading. The responsory is words from Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Mary's song, the Magnificat. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked to favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. So we continue in prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the day that is passing, for the people we've spoken with, for the places we have been, for the work that we have done. And we pray that our worship, our thoughts, the meditations of our hearts this day would be holy in your sight. Thinking of the reading from Ezra, as we remember those exiles returning to worship in the city of Jerusalem after being exiles in Assyria. We pray for all those who are far from home tonight all who feel as though they are in exile. 
We pray for refugees and asylum seekers, those who are prisoners of conscience, that you would protect them and keep them safe. We pray for your church today as it has been scattered amidst the pandemic. For all those Christians struggling to pray, that your Holy Spirit would encourage them and help them to draw closer to you. Encouraged by the letter to the Ephesians, we know that you build us into your family and we give you thanks for the welcoming embrace with which you reach out to each one of us. And we pray for all those for whom today has been difficult. Those struggling with shortages of food or clean water. Those facing the effects of climate change. Those who are struggling to cope with loneliness or isolation. And we pray especially for all those in government and in the health service and in local authorities who are responding to the coronavirus pandemic, that they would have the resources, the wisdom and the compassion that they need to fulfil their role. And so we look ahead to the week that is to come. And we pray that in our daily life and work, we would know your presence with us in all the joy and the sorrow. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, Raise us, who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So as we come to the end of our time of prayer, may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>